Hello, welcome to this module on derivatives. My name is Santiago Mol Lopez. Today we are going to review the properties of the derivatives and we are going to introduce more derivatives of elemental functions. The requirements are quite simple. They are to know how to operate with powers, to know how to work with rational numbers, and to know the elemental functions. In addition, you also need the derivatives of three functions that I'm going to use a lot in the following examples. The following is the constant function. You have to know that the derivative of a constant function is always zero. The derivative of the function x is one, and that the derivative of the function x raised to the power of n is n times x raised to the power of n minus one. Pay attention to the construction of this derivative. If someone asks you to calculate x raised to a number, the derivative simply consists of taking that number, lowering it in front, multiplying, and subtracting one from the existing exponent. In addition, the properties of the derivatives tell us the following. If I have a function that is the sum of two functions, in this case g of x plus h of x, the derivative of this sum is simply the sum of the derivatives. We simply differentiate each of the functions that are being added. We also have the property that if we have a number multiplying a function g of x, its derivative consists of leaving the number that is multiplying the constant exactly the same and differentiating the function that accompanies it. Let's see some examples. We will start with a very simple polynomial that is of the form x squared plus x plus one. In this case, as you can see, there are three elements. One is the function x squared, the other is the function x and the function one. In this case, the derivative would simply involve differentiating each of the terms. In the first place, we start with the function x squared. How is it differentiated? We take two, we pass it forward, as you can see here, and we subtract one from the exponent that we had. The next is the function x. In this case, the derivative of x is equal to one. So I simply change the x with one here in the derivative. And the derivative of a constant, as we have said a moment ago, is zero. Therefore, the expression would look like this. And if we simplify a bit, it would be two x plus one. Let's see another example. Let's consider a polynomial of a higher degree. In this case, it would be 10 times x to the fifth power minus three x squared plus two x plus 10. How many terms are involved in this polynomial? We have one, two, three, four. How do you differentiate it? By differentiating each of these terms. Let's start with the first one. We have here something that is new. 10 times x to the fifth power. This 10 is multiplying. Notice that here I leave it exactly the same. It is multiplying. We differentiate x to the fifth power. What is the derivative of x to the fifth power? As you can see, we lower the exponent of five by multiplying and subtract one from the original exponent. What is the next element? Minus three times x squared, exactly the same. Minus three is a constant that multiplies. We leave it the same, minus three. Now, we calculate the derivative of x squared, which is two x, why? Because the two comes down and multiplies and we subtract one to the exponent that we had. It would be two minus one, which is one, so it doesn't appear. The next element is two times x, the same procedure. Two is a constant that multiplies. We leave it exactly the same. And what is the derivative of x? It would be one, but we have not put it because two by one is two and we have simplified it already. And finally, the derivative of 10, which is a constant, would simply be zero. Simplifying this expression, we would have 10 by five is 50 x to the fourth minus six x plus two. In the following expression, we're going to put a function of the form x raised to a negative number and then simply a power. How are these types of functions differentiated? We apply the same rule. As you can see here, what we do is take the exponent. We put it in front and we subtract one to the one we had. In this case, we would have minus two times x raised to power of minus two minus one. We will see that it is minus three. The other member, which is four times x cubed, we solve it in the same way. Four is a constant that multiplies. We leave it in there and the derivative of x cubed would be three by x raised to the power of three minus one we have subtracted one from the exponent. Simplifying, minus two by x raised to the power of minus three plus 12 x squared. This part of the solution should be expressed in the fractional way. Notice that the exponent is negative and x raised to the power of minus three could be written as one over x cubed with the positive exponent. We are going to see some derivatives of elementary functions that are also very important and will appear a lot. The first is a trigonometric function, which is the sine function of x. Its derivative is going to be cosine of x. The derivative of the function cosine of x is going to be the function minus sine of x. Here I want to make a small note. Pay close attention to this minus sign. The derivative of cosine is minus sine. This minus will give you some problems in the future. 
because it's very easy to forget about that negative sign. Well, there are more trigonometric functions. We are going to see next a few more. Another that is also very important would be the tangent of x, which, let me remind you, is sine of x divided by cosine of x. But I won't include its derivative here because I hope you'll see it when we discuss the derivative of a product of functions. I also want you to review the derivative of e to the power of x. If we take the function e to the power of x, then its derivative is very simple. It's just the function e to the power of x without any modification. The derivative of the Napierian logarithm of x is 1 divided by x. These are also very important elementary functions that appear frequently. Of course, here I want to emphasize something. We have here the function raised to x. What happens if we do not use the number e? What happens if we use a number or a value a, which is different from the number e? The derivative is very similar to the number e, but you have to add one more element, which is the natural logarithm of a. In other words, the derivative of the function a raised to the power of x would be the same function multiplied by the natural logarithm of the base a. Let's continue with the next one. Here we have reviewed the derivative of the function of the natural logarithm of x. I have told you that it is 1 divided by x. What happens when we do not use the natural logarithm and we use a logarithm in another base? Let me also remind you that the natural logarithm is the logarithm in base e. Base e logarithm. In this case, the derivative is simply 1 divided by x, like the natural logarithm. But you have to add one more element here in the denominator, natural logarithm of a, which is the base multiplying x. Furthermore, we are now going to use inverse functions. The arctangent function of x is the inverse function of tangent, which we defined earlier as sine divided by cosine. What is the derivative of the arctangent of x? It is 1 divided by 1 plus x squared. Why do I have to remember this function and its derivative? It is very easy. You might not see it frequently in this calculus module, but the arctangent function appears countless times in the integral calculus module. So, please try to remember this function and this derivative because it will solve many integration problems for you. Let's now go to the inverse function of the arcsine. In this case, what we have is that its derivative is 1 divided by the square root of 1 minus x squared. I know it might seem a bit complicated, but I hope you remember it in the future. And we need one more. The inverse function of cosine, which would be the arc cosine of x. In this case, the derivative is very similar, so it won't require too much effort if you have memorized the derivative of arcsine. It is minus 1 divided by the square root of 1 minus x squared. The only difference between these two is the negative sign. Let's see some examples. Now that we have many functions and we know many more derivatives, we simply have to combine them and apply the properties that we have seen at the beginning. For example, let's see the function 3 times the arctangent of x plus the sine of x plus a to the power of x. Three functions that have appeared a while ago. They are being added. We have to apply the property that if we want to differentiate this function, we have to differentiate the first, differentiate the second, and differentiate the third while respecting the addition. Let's start with the first one. As shown up here, the derivative of the arctangent is 1 divided by 1 plus x squared, so the first thing we do is apply it, keeping the 3 as a constant. Look, it is a constant that multiplies, so we leave it as it is. We simply replace the arctangent with 1 divided by 1 plus x squared. That's the importance of memorizing all these functions. It's simply a matter of substituting the derivative where it belongs. Next, what is the derivative of the sine of x? It is the cosine of x. Simply replace sine of x with cosine of x in the derivative. And finally, the simplest of all, the derivative of e raised to the power of x is e raised to the power of x. Therefore, that would be the derivative of this function. Let's see another example, also with sums. We have here introduced x to the power of minus 4. To review a bit the ones of the type x to the power of n, cosine of x plus 3 times the arc cosine of x. How do you differentiate it? Exactly the same. We are going to differentiate each of these elements. First of all, the derivative of x raised to the power of minus 4. I have already done it directly. The minus 4 comes down in front, multiplies, and we subtract 1 from the exponent. Minus 4, minus 1, minus 5. Next, let's see the derivative of cosine. The derivative of cosine is minus sine of x, which explains the negative sign. And finally, the derivative of 3 times the arc cosine of x is minus 3, divided by the square root of 1 minus x to the square root. Maybe it confuses you a little, but in reality the 3 remains the same, and that minus appears from the derivative of the arc cosine, this minus that is here in front of the 3. What have we seen today? 
We have seen the derivatives of elementary functions, quite a few of them. I hope you remember them for the following sessions. We have also applied the properties of the most elemental derivatives. I hope this helps you. Thank you for your attention.